that right there is a real live coconut tree with coconuts. And you're wondering, where am I? I'm at the Coconut Man's Plantation. Who do we have here? This is my lovely daughter, Rhea. What are we doing, Rhea? Why, what's your name up there for? So I created this cute little children's book called Little Ooh. Coconut Island. Okay. And Ryan here was such a fan that he wanted me to do a first edition hardcover copy. And so I flew out here to Maui and to meet Ryan in person and deliver the books where this is where you can get them. But Ryan's going to give us a tour of his coconut farm here. Cool. It's pretty awesome. Thanks for coming. Take over, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. My name is Ryan. We're in Haiku, uh, Maui. Uh, on the North Shore at about a thousand feet. And this is my family's little homestead and where we teach our cooking classes. Uh, for the last about uh, 12 years, I've been teaching people in Maui how to open coconuts and turn them into meals. And so that's what this place is all about. Um, but it's also a homestead, so we grow a lot of other things just uh, for our kitchen. And I want to show you guys. Let's do it. You're going to give right. us a tour. Okay. Take us, take us away. Um, where do we start? Well, first of all, uh, maybe I'll start with the coconut you gave me, and I'll just carry this around and drink it, you know, while you talk. Okay. How's that? <laughs> I see some uh, baby coconuts over here. Mm -hmm. So most people don't really realize, but every coconut is essentially the seed to grow one more coconut tree. Um, so if a coconut stays on the tree for an entire year, it'll actually turn brown and fall on its own. You don't have to climb the tree to get it. And you find these on the beach when you go on vacation. And that's a little sprout, like a little chicken pecking out of an egg. Yep. Um, and give this uh, about uh, five to six years and it's gonna be producing fruit. It's gonna be a full-size coconut tree. They grow really, really fast. And we love your mulch. Yeah, we take all our old coconuts from processing, from making milk and noodles and all the stuff, and we shred them up, um, and we get our coir and our pith. We use that in our garden uh, mixes. Uh, something, if you buy a bag of high-end potting soil at the store, it's up to 40% either coconut pith or peat moss. Peat moss is a non-renewable resource. Coconut is extremely renewable, so if you can check the label and choose coconut, that's always a good choice. And not to interrupt you, but the name of your company is Coconut, Coconut Information. Information. And you have some t-shirts people can buy and all that. You have yeah. a website? Of course, yeah. Coconutinformation.com. It's kind of a geeky name, but that's what we do is we want to have people come either to the website or here to the farm and leave knowing, uh, or with the information, knowing how to turn them into meals because... Uh, uh, it's a tough nut to crack. People have to kind of get it. over the intimidating <laughs> factor. And so that's what we're all about, just making it fun, uh, empowering people. And, so yeah. every time you're in Maui, uh, you got to come out to Ryan's place here. And it's the cutest place ever. Uh, you've, and where do you actually conduct the classes? Uh, in the kitchen. In the kitchen? Uh, we do okay. a walk around. We pick some ingredients. It's always uh, changing a little bit what's in season. Um, we usually are making coconut oyster shooters, uh, noodles, milk, cream, soda pop. So the menu's well, changing a little bit. Let's uh, take a look at that setup with the soda pop. Okay. Coconut yeah. soda pop. Let's go cool. show us that. Uh, and what are, what's Kitty's name? Uh, Iolani. Iolani. Kitty, 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 kitty. You're the coconut kitty. All right. So if you like kitties and coconuts, <laughs> this is absolutely your place. And here's the very first coconut tree ever planted that we started with. Tell us about that one, Ryan. So this tree is almost exactly eight years old. It actually could be eight years old to the day. Ooh. It may be. Oh, it's wow. it, we should have a birthday party. It's birthday, yeah. It's a birthday party. Um, and I don't know if you can see from here, but if you look up at it, there's all these different bunches of coconuts. Now, the magical thing about coconuts compared to other trees, say an apricot or an apple or an avocado, most fruit trees will flower once a year. Uh, the fruit will ripen up for about two months. So you've got 10 months of the year with nothing edible on a tree. Coconuts flower every moon cycle. So there's always edible fruit of all different ages. So you know there's always the cartoons um, in like the newspaper or magazines of somebody stranded on a little island with one tree. It's always a coconut. Absolutely. Because if you were to be stranded, um, it's all you need. You got your protein, you got your fat, you got your water, but most importantly, you have it all year round. And as long as there's a good surf break right there, you're good. Pretty much everything you need. <laughs> right. um, but so I, I call it the most sustainable plants on earth. And I think you could make a strong argument for that. If you come to the tropics, whether you're going to Mexico or Costa Rica or Indonesia or here in Hawaii, a lot of times 
at the resorts where people are, they look at the trees, they don't see coconuts, they hire guys to climb the tree, cut the fruit, um, but it shouldn't Landfill. Be, yeah, it's, it's used as a landscape plant because it makes you feel good, you know you're in the tropics, um, but it's not a landscape plant, it is a giant pantry that restocks itself. Food producer. Yep. So I had, ever since I was a little kid, I had the notion that coconuts could solve world hunger yeah I think because so. most world hunger happens in tropical locations and these things actually get really drought tolerant after time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so with the massive They're root system hardy. That they that's why the county likes to use them as like a landscape plant right 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 all right moving right along let's do it let's do it let's check this place out look at the beautiful architecture everywhere you go ryan has wonderful taste and that was super beautiful. You built that and all kinds yeah. of other things here. So this is our kitchen. It, um, this is where we teach our classes. We usually bring families and private groups up to about 10 or 12 people in here, but we do lots of just couples. Um, this is where we're tasting the different coconuts. Uh, we're going through the different tools, um, making different things out of them. Um, we got a shelf here made out of a coconut trunk that I just hit with a chainsaw oh, real yeah. roughly. It's look a, at that beautiful it's be texture. It's a beautiful wood. These are the little... Those are the... Were the, they, were they the climbed spikes, them? yeah. The spikes from the climb. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you and look if at... if they need a bag, you, you sell bags. Yeah, these are a, this is a yeah. coconut bag. And if you forget Hats. to bring your hat to Hawaii, uh, Ryan can solve that for yeah. you as well. So... Um, sometimes you'll see it sold under the term porcupine wood because it looks like it has little quills yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably the most useful plant on earth, I would imagine. I think so. Argue. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So we just got our delivery of these books. <laughs> there they are. Yeah. Which are so there awesome. There they are, ready to go. Hot off the press. <laughs> um, yeah, so what we do is um, we have uh, so many coconuts coming in. Sometimes we can't use them all. We want to extend the shelf life of it. So we take the coconut, we process it, we put it into cakes, we carbonate it and then we make a coconut soda pop. Uh, and that's recycled. right here. Yeah, recycled. This is where the magic happens. All recycled bottles. Coconut um, soda pop. When you're drinking your coconut soda pop, it all starts right here from Ryan. That is super, super cool. I've never even heard of this. And I've been uh, around a while. It's You're starting to see it on the market, but we do it with no preservatives, all raw, and it tastes kind of like a fresh coconut. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And you've got your coconut art, of course. Yeah, this is a good friend. Here's a picture of uh, Uncle Guy Fieri when he came. Oh, yeah. He gave us a really nice thank you note. Yeah, my channel's not as uh, popular as his, but uh, there'll be a few people who see it. Just give it time. Just give it time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this like some kind of coconut oil here? Uh, what's that? So we got a big chunk of beeswax. That's from our bees. Oh, that's from your bees. Yeah, so yeah. Ryan's got a whole. So this is a full permaculture deal here. He's following all the principles. In fact, the reason I know that, the moment I showed up, I saw this, uh, and I do know that he is part of that religion of which I adhere to myself. So, uh, and in, when, you, when, you're, when you're out doing your coconuts, what's the most important thing to have with you? Machete, yeah. Machete, this is a beautiful. This is a beautiful blade. This is called a kukuri. This was the knife of the Nepalese army, the shape of it. Oh. And like a, in India on the other side of the Himalayas. Um, I love the balance of this for coconuts. I'm not a really big guy, and so my elbows and my wrists can start to hurt if I'm holding something too heavy, and I find it holds its blade really well. It's the official machete issued to the U.S. Marines if they go uh, somewhere where they need it. I had an ex-Marine that came and stayed with me. And He's like, I know that, I know got, that thing. Got Saved my life a couple times. Fantastic <laughs> blade. <laughs> We've um, got so the gift is, shop. Yeah, we got this. What, we got to scoot these over and get Ray's book right here. What does a coconut scraper do? Um, so, when you open a fully mature coconut, there's that thick meat. The original way oh. a lot of native people would get it out would be with a seashell, right. and you would scrape it. This is essentially a metal seashell. Um, we get beautiful, uh, decadent, thin little shreds for macaroons. Wow. Uh, making some balls. Um, making milk the traditional way, making oil the traditional way. So yeah, this is a pretty awesome little tool. That's How cool. often do you eat coconut yourself? Uh, we start every morning at about 5.30 making our cream for espresso. We use yes. the leftover for our oatmeal. Um, we often use it just to kind of like reheat sauces. Right. Uh, we make soups. Uh, coconut ulu soup is really 
unpopular. And, and Ryan looks pretty healthy to me, so I think maybe coconut is the fountain. You say you're 62 years old? <laughs> 41, 41. Oh, okay, even then, that's, yeah. you're still looking good for that. So I think coconut, coconuts are the way to go for sure. All right, should we have Ryan open? Uh, what, what happens out here? What happens out here? Um, so this is our, kind of our outdoor uh, yeah. dining area. So when uh, people come and... Um, you can feed them out here. Yeah, we can uh, sit down here to eat. We got our new little pizza oven. We'll actually take the shells of the coconut because it's really rich in carbon. And we can use it in the pizza oven as fuel and then cook our macaroons and stuff in there. Nice. All right. Well, we might as well give them a little bit of garden tour because everyone loves that. Now, if it's a really hot day and people come here, does it cost extra <laughs> to come out here and use the Infinity Edge swimming pool? So, because I would be kind of interested in that myself. So this is a 350 gallon horse trough. Well, um, okay. We've got it piped actually down into the gulch. So when we need to drain it, we open it up and we can water our trees down in the gulch. Um, we use it as a cool, just jumping off, uh, jumping into a cool off tub. We also piped over some hot water. Um, Every so, now and then we'll do a hot tub. So a lot of people pay like a hundred grand to build an infinity edge <laughs> right. pool. What was your budget on this sun? <laughs> The deck and the tub was eight hundred and fifty dollars. Eight hundred and fifty yes. bucks, people. You don't need to spend a whole boatload of cash to build yourself an infinity edge pool. Yeah. So there you go. That's all you got to do. Um, and of course, when you come here, there will be all kinds of interpretive, other things to talk about. Uh, Ryan can talk breadfruit for would you say six hour uh, monologue? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm. You Good know, I'm thing. still kind of learning about Ulu. Um, this one's almost ripe. These bumps will smooth out. You'll see more of this like white sap on it. You can eat it as a starch. You can actually take this, throw it right onto some hot coals. It'll like uh, even start to glow. Flip wow. it over 10 minutes aside, uh, let it cool off, crack it open. It earns its name breadfruit. It's like a giant loaf of bread. This would probably feed all four of us really well. Nice. You could pound that into pizza dough. Um, you could uh, cut them thin and uh, fry it in coconut oil for chips or uh, cut them into fries, um, make it as a base of a soup, um, or you can let it fall, ripen, it'll soften up and it'll be uh, really sweet, almost like a, like a creme brulee, um, yeah. And so uh, when you moved from Fresno, did you know such a fruit existed? No. no, I had no <laughs> and idea. how long ago was that? I had no idea. 20 years ago, I had no idea about ago. any of this. All you people who think about quitting your jobs and moving to Maui, uh, there's a few people actually did it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Anyway, but... let's see that vegetable garden. Cool. Come on. Everyone likes vegetables. Let's see this thing. So we got a little cinnamon tree here. Oh, it's kind nice. of a new addition. Wow. Okay. We tasted that peanut butter fruit. Yeah, earlier. that's amazing. I love that. And uh, here is uh, what I would consider a extremely robust coconut tree. Uh, this is a beauty. And uh, you said this one was here before you so came. This one was about a year old. So the one right behind you, this is about how big it was. Oh. This is about one year of growth. Did you ever come out, do any kind of like... Um, like uh, like praying to the coconut tree that was already here for good luck or anything like that. That's what I would have done. It fed us like it was one of the first trees to give us uh, fruit. So yeah. um, I actually had a one of my first classes that we hosted here was a little homeschool group of little kids and we picked them right off the tree, let the kids Aww. pick them. And it was awesome. That's so right cute. Yeah. And these are some dwarfs. So these are dwarfs. People use the term like uh, dwarf or Samoan. There's also hybrids. Um, my understanding is that they kind of evolved on coral atolls, so they needed to be shorter so they didn't blow over in the wind. They needed to be shorter to shade the roots. They still grow up. They just grow up at a lot slower pace. So if you look at the gaps in between the scars of the yeah. fronds, they're right on top of each other. Oh, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <Let go. laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's what happens in palms. Like when you grow palms in full sun, uh, they do the same thing. And if you grow them in shade, these internodes will hugely increase. Because the they're grow. trying to shoot, get above They're trying the to get up above the canopy. Here's what the flower looks yeah. like when it's just starting. Yeah. yeah. And if you, you ever like eat this part. So what you can do with this is before the flower opens, okay. you actually bind it all. Um, and then you cut the tip okay. and that's going to allow the coconut nectar that would flow to the flower for the bees and oh. whatnot to be collected. Cut it once in the morning, once in the evening. 
dehydrate that. That's what coconut sugar comes from. Wow. You can also ferment that nectar. Um, that's what uh, uh, coconut toddy or coconut beer comes from. The palm guy's getting schooled by the coconut guy. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love learning Brian more knows stuff. His stuff. This is great. Brian's the expert. <laughs> so there's the cool homestead. And of course, uh, you know, if you're going to do this kind of thing, you have to have bees. And if you be, have bees, you're going to want your little bee suit. So that's why that's there. And so look at this beautiful, concise, gorgeous little upraised that vegetable one, yeah, plant. That rack is nice. Do you have any hints on like uh, the best way to create beautiful soil for vegetable gardens if you have a surplus of coconut uh, um, so husks? <laughs> I like to compost in place rather than moving. I've done both, but we basically take our coconuts. I don't know if you can see that pile over there. There they are. Uh, there they we've are. got a shredder. And That's... so uh, we shred the coconut and use it as mulch. It's really high carbon, so you almost have to kind of overcompensate with some extra nitrogen to right. load it up. Yeah. Um, I had some... Uh, failures in the past where I just applied just that without like uh, manures or uh... What is this plant out of curiosity? I've seen in vet in edible gardens uh, What is that? This I mean, right that here? looks like a canna to me, but right here? is it not a canna? This is turmeric. Oh, that's turmeric. Yeah. Oh, and I should getting, know that. Uh, yeah, here's a beautiful turmeric flower Wow. Right here. Oh, yeah oh, Look at that that's turmeric, people. I should have known, but I didn't. So yeah, each one of these now probably have a, a hand or multiple hands underground. We'll pull them out um, and then uh, keep them kind of on the kitchen counter until they start to sprout and then go and, again. And here's something rather interesting. Uh, what are we looking at here? This is a uh, So different tree. mulberries. That's what, that's what I thought it was um, a mulberry. This is yeah. a learning process for me. I've seen it done where people These take get big. This, uh, train them to become like living fences. Living fences, nice. Yeah, so I would like this to uh, be really pickable and not get too crazy big. Yeah. Right. Um, so just kind of like learning. This is kind of an experiment for another property. And of course, if you're in Hawaii, you must have taro. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much part of the culture here. So explain what's going on with the taro there uh, and your drainage system. Okay, so we're in this big flat area when we bought this. This was a, a clay tennis court. Um, but the people who built it cut it wrong, so it would fill up and flood over. So the taro patch kind of acts as a drain, like a rainwater garden. So all the water goes down to this low point. I've got a six inch pipe. It'll actually fill up. Once it gets full, it goes to an overflow pipe and gets down to the rainforest gulch where it wants to go. Um, so we don't lose all our topsoil, essentially. That's wonderful. Permascape principles at work. Yeah. And uh, is that another bee box high in the tree? Or so this is a, is a, a swarm trap. So, swarm trap, um, okay. I think it's Thomas Seeley wrote the book about um, the honeybee democracy, I think is what it's called. And basically, there's done so many studies on bees. So they know a bee's preference when a scout bee is going out to find the new uh, location. They want to be at 12 feet elevation. They want a two and a half inch hole. Uh, they want a uh, 10 liter cavity, vertical in orientation, and they want it basically facing uh, south or uh, southeast. So that's what that is. And I've uh, kind of tempted only so far, in two years I've tempted one uh, swarm to move in. And so after they get established, I can then move them into my apiary. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Right that's on. That's really cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So that's this is really cool. This is Does a, it smell good? Uh, Look at that. Bubble, uh, bubble gum basil. Bubble gum mm. basil? Let's get a reaction. Oh my gosh. Let's get a reaction. Oh that my gosh. What else? Use it's your exactly, words, Rhea. It's exactly how it sounds. It's like <laughs> sweet basil. It that is like like floral almost, like floral wow. basil. It can um, smell like the bubble gum. The bees, bees are happy they about love it. it. They love it. They love oh, it. Oh wow. Love it. I bet that makes your heart. All right. Just and if you want some monarch butterflies, what do you do? Ah, so this is a, a great plant um, in the tropics. This is a uh, tropical milkweed from Indonesia. Um, we call it the crown flower in Hawaii. Um, some people even think it's a native, but it's actually a, an adopted uh, flower. Uh, you pull these little petals off, and we have what looks like a crown. Yay. And it's a beautiful lay plant. Uh, so uh, friends' birthdays, um, graduations, we'll make lays. Um, and it's the host for the monarch butterfly. It's actually really drought tolerant. Um, it's usually uh, growing more in the dry areas, um, but it's thriving here. So. That's a beauty. We have this at home, but it looks nothing like this. Is, well, it's a different species, actually. These are actually, we, these are native up in uh, Yosemite as well, in the valley. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 
but uh, different different species. This is yeah, it's, huge. It's, when you yeah. said a tropical milkweed, I'm like, oh yeah, I see it. <laughs> Big giant leaves and our, our succulent um, stems. Our monarchs don't, huge flowers uh, don't go back and forth to the mainland, so they're here all year. Oh round. really? Yeah, permanent. Yeah. Are they yeah. utilizing the eucalyptus groves? I think so, and we were surrounded by eucalyptus. So yeah, the combination a of, of kind of the, the pond, this, and the eucalyptuses. I actually am starting to. Uh, plant more of this all around i want to kind of turn it into a mini butterfly sanctuary it's a it makes it feel so good oh yeah for sure anything else you want to show us before i cut you off oh god uh, <laughs> can, this could be a non-stop live yeah, stream forever. and if they come here you know is your star fruit <laughs> seasonal oh yeah cool. oh really let's take a look at that right before the battery Oops, dies <laughs> oh there he is there he is. So if they eat your if they eat your plant, that's the whole idea. People. So they've eaten this whole thing down multiple oh, times. Wow, right that now, many. That's right that's now, success. It's kind of a draw. Um, but yeah, it, it goes for booms and busts. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the chickens like it too. So um, that's a good thing. And uh, now the star fruit is that seasonal? So uh, this is the second. Um, uh, fruiting this thing did it did it about a month or two ago, and this is definitely our are gonna be our bumper crop for the year. Right. I know a lot of people get star fruit at the store, but. These are way better, I, I so can good. attest to that. I mean, even last week, it wasn't as good as it is this week. I really nice. like for the orange to be on there. These are the best star fruit I've ever had. Cool, if we had a, a picker, I feel like they, we could uh, taste those up there, be even a, a little better. Yeah, you can right see on, so if people here. come here for the the, uh, the class, I'm sure you'd probably stoke them out with all kinds so, of oddball things that are in season. Yeah, we're always picking what's in season. Um, soursops, jabotacabe, jackfruit, uh, citrus, papayas. Um, kind of the dream is to inspire people to take on like a whole foods lifestyle. Right. You know, the, when you eat like this, there's no plastic packaging, um, there's no preservatives, um, you feel connected to nature. I think it's the way we're supposed to live and um, it's a lot of work, but uh, I don't know the benefits you can't buy. So you, there's only one way to do it is to do it yourself. All right. Well, let's um, tell them again uh, everything they need to know to come here, go to your website, all that. Cool. And so, then we will end on the coconut husks. Yeah. Those so are pretty uh, cool. Uh, my website, my farm is called Coconut Information. I think if you Google that, you'll find it. Also, if you can't come all the way to Hawaii, we've actually spent a lot of time making some really good how-to videos. They're all available for free on our website um, and on YouTube too. So look for Coconut Information. You can learn how to cook with them, how to make milk, how to do all sorts of stuff. And it's still a learning um, experience for me. So I'm taking people along kind of like you are and um, showing them as I go. So we're going to talk a little bit about that plastic packaging that you were talking about. Okay, okay. And the beauty of nature is that nature provides its own packaging. Mm, okay. And, yeah, and, and there's so many things you can do with nature's packaging beyond composting. And Ryan's going to tell us all about that. So a coconut's kind of a unique thing because it's got some great fats in there it wants to protect. They're falling from up to 80 feet, bouncing off the rocks, floating in the ocean for a few months. So it's really well protected. You should make um, surfboard bags out of them. <laughs> totally. Um, they're starting to make some uh, coolers and different things out of it too. Um, the coconut husk has two parts. We've got the coir and we've got the pith. So the coir is these long strands like this. And the pith is this little bit of uh, almost like a waiter messed up your cork and got you got a little bit of cork in your wine. Yeah. So the pith uh, holds three to five times its own weight in water, but it breathes. It's got minerals. Uh, the coir becomes doormats. Chances are your first step outside of your house is onto a coconut doormat. Um, so we use this for mulching. Uh, we use it for our chicken nesting boxes. We use it to tie our tags onto things in the gift shop. The uh, pith we put into our garden beds. Um, and then even just the whole husk for someone that doesn't have a machine to break it up, this is awesome. You can bury this uh, face up, it'll absorb moisture, it'll break down over the next 10 years, provide a little uh, air in the soil. Um, yeah, it's What amazing. I liked was your idea how you backfilled your oh, retaining walls, your terraces. He's got, uh, well, let's, just take, let's just take a quick look at that because that's really uh, a wonderful it? thing you did here. <laughs> So Ryan, as we mentioned, has lots of eucalyptus trees, uh, free product for him. In fact, some that need to be cleared. So instead of uh, grinding them up and just making mulch out of them, 
he made this wonderful retaining wall. And we talked a little bit about your structure over there, mm -hmm. which is uh, supported by coconut, or I'm sorry, eucalyptus posts. Yep. Um, and I was a little bit concerned they might rot, but you have the, the idea that they're going to be resistant to that because of all so, the oils, which yeah, makes a lot of sense. So eight years in of using um, uh, stumps to cut coconuts on, meaning I'm spilling coconut water onto it constantly. Uh, there's really no sign hardly a rot at all. Right. Um, the eucalyptuses are kind of our biggest like adversary. They're always yeah. like pushing yeah. their way in here. The robusta yeah. eucalyptus. They're trying is to take over. For, like falling. So we cut everything, and I'm even cutting the ones on my neighbor's property to kind of keep it from falling in here. Oh my gosh. Um, and we made these retaining walls. Um, some of these are just sitting, and then kind of every other one is dug down about a foot or so, so it sits well. But we did it out. Uh, from the slope and then we filled it with a like a lasagna layer of coconut husk, uh, dirt, um, fish carcasses, uh, wood chips, just kind of like a really nice organic uh, lasagna. And then all the trees are, of course, uh, the roots are in there. I actually pulled one of these out and that tree had roots in it already. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, it only yeah. been there like six months and it's already. All right. There. Can I interject? <laughs> all right so this is such a great thing guys you could probably do this with a lot of other uh tree trunks as well you want them to be straight you want them to be su substantial so that they will resist the forces of the hill coming out mm -hmm. and as ryan said the hill stopped short of the wall so we created this upland uh raised terrace here and where we live we have clay soils and there's always this creep going on and so the hill is always trying to move out so that would eventually push these over in some situations but when you backfill the whole area with this spongy coconut-like material, you end up with a situation and a, and a little bit of soil mixed in. The soil will bring all the microbes and all this wonderful uh, relationships will start to happen. The plants will absolutely love it. It's a beautiful sponge-like condition. And, it, and most importantly, it's, it's uh, aerated. It's free draining, so there's no hydrostatic pressure that builds up behind this wall that could also push on it. And it also, because it's aerated, it's going to be less... Um, rot prone to these, these pieces of wood because the more moisture that sits back there constantly, the more you have rot. So it's a really fantastic solution because these retaining walls are extremely expensive right. to build uh, any other way. And in this case, we've used product. Well, I didn't, had nothing to do with it. Yeah. We didn't use it. Ryan used uh, this solution to solve multiple problems of getting rid of this material and making it more beautiful than any retaining wall could ever be. Yeah. Anything and if else you want to add to that? I mean, if you have a couple big problem trees on your property, have the guys cut them into chunks where you and a friend or two can roll it. I mean, material is so expensive these exactly. days. There's no need to yeah. uh, bring off-site uh, material. And you can also use these in smaller, uh, le less uh, smaller diameter segments, proportional to how tall your wall is going to be. And if you just have a little edging you want to do, you could just bury that a foot and pack it in and then uh, leave a foot above. You have a one foot little edge. Yep. And if you need something really big and substantial, you want to go with the big boys like Ryan did here. Rhea, yeah. uh, thank Ryan for, um, no, you know, you. Oh helping out with your book deal. Yeah, no, Ryan is really the reason why I'm here and the reason why Little Coconut Island got a hard copy edition. And <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Well, and it, check it out. Um, Maybe we'll put a little teaser. You could have a little link to a teaser to the, the book, but it's really awesome. Uh, everyone that's come here has loved it. We sold out really fast and it deserves a hard copy. So now we got it. Right on. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ryan. We'll see you on the web. Aloha.